Hi, my name's Amanda and I'm a pharmacist. Today I'll be talking about routes of administration. And if you find this video useful, please press the like button and subscribe to my channel and share it with others who may find it helpful too. Thanks, I really appreciate it. So what is route of administration? Route of administration is the way that a drug is placed into the body. And there are two main categories of route of administration. There's non-parenteral, which is basically the non-injectable medications, and parenteral, which are the injectable medications. First, we'll look at the non-parenteral routes of administration. As I said, these are the non-injectable routes of administration, and generally they are easier and more convenient than the parenteral. And some of the non-parenteral routes include oral, sublingual or buccal, inhaled, nasal, ophthalmic, otic, rectal, vaginal, topical, and transdermal. And we'll look at these in more detail. First, let's look at oral. Um, these are medications taken by mouth, swallowed, and absorbed into the body by the GI tract. The oral route is abbreviated PO, which literally means by mouth in Latin. And some examples include tablets, capsules, oral liquids, such as suspensions and solutions. And the oral route of administration dosage forms are convenient and usually less expensive, but they have a delayed onset of action and the person must be awake and able to swallow. Now we'll look at sublingual and buccal. And these medications are placed in the mouth, but they bypass the GI tract for faster absorption compared to the oral. Um, sublingual means under the tongue and it's abbreviated SL. An example is nitroglycerin tablets for chest pain and buccal is in the cheek. Both of these provide rapid onset of action, but the buccal route is slower than the sublingual route. Next is the inhaled route of administration. These medications are inhaled through the mouth into the lungs and rapidly absorbed through the bronchioles. Um, examples include uh, meter dose inhalers or MDIs, nebulizer solutions is another good example. And then there's nasal route of administration. These medications are inhaled through the nose and rapidly absorbed through the nasal mucosa. Just for an example, nasal spray. Both the inhaled and nasal routes bypass the GI tract and act locally. And this is for a reduction of systemic side effects. Next is the ophthalmic route of administration. These medications are administered through the eye, includes eye drops and eye ointments and some abbreviations for the route for ophthalmic routes of administration. OU means both eyes, OD means right eye, OS means left eye. And then there's the otic route of administration. These medications are administered through the ear, such as eardrops. And their abbreviations include AU means both ears, AD means right ear, and AS is left ear. Um, next is the rectal route of administration. These medications are administered rectally and absorbed through the lower GI tract, and they can have a systemic or local effect. And rectal administration is abbreviated PR. An example would be suppositories. Then there's vaginal route of administration. And these medications are administered vaginally for generally a local effect. And vaginal administration is abbreviated PV. An example includes vaginal creams and the vaginal suppositories or tablets. Next is the topical route of administration. These medications are applied directly to a part of the body. This includes the skin or mucous membranes for a local effect. And some examples are creams, ointments, and gels. Then there's the transdermal route of administration. These medications are absorbed through the skin for a systemic effect. Transdermal, abbreviation, transdermal administration is abbreviated TD, and some exa example includes the medicated patches. Now we'll look at the parenteral routes of administration. As I said at the beginning, these are the injectable routes of administration. They bypass the GI tract and have a faster onset of action, but they're invasive, which means they require a needle into the skin. And the parenteral routes of administration um, mostly begin with the prefix intra, meaning into. So there's intravenous, intramuscular, subcutaneous, intradermal, and those four we'll look at in more detail. And there's intraarterial, intracardiac, intrathecal, intraocular, intraperitoneal, and intraarticular. That's a few other examples of parenteral routes of administration. 
So first we'll look at the intravenous or the IV route, which literally means into the vein. These medications are injected through a needle directly into a vein. It must be sterile and free of particles. There's an IV injection, or also known as an IV push or bolus. This is when there's a small amount of medication given by a syringe and needle over a short time. There's IV infusion. This is when large volumes of fluid are given over a longer time. And within the IV infusion, there are a couple different types. There's a continuous infusion, which is a large volume of fluid given at a constant rate over several hours. This could be like for rehydration. And there's the intermittent infusion. This is when small volumes of fluid are administered over a short period of time at intervals. For example, would be an antibiotic given over 30 minutes every six hours, piggyback or IVPB, be abbreviation for that. Um, which means it's connected to the main line by a Y site to, to minimize injecting the patient. That way another medication be can be given without another needle stick to the patient. Next is intramuscular or IM, which means into the muscle. These medications are administered by a direct injection into a large muscle. Generally, this is the deltoid muscle of the upper arm, the thigh or the buttocks. These medications um, cause well, this is used for medications that cause more irritation, uh, um, the intramuscular route, because they are past the skin. And they generally require a longer needle to reach the muscle, once again, because this is past the skin. Then there's subcutaneous, which is abbreviated SQ, SC, or subQ, and that means under the skin. These medications are administered by a direct injection just under the skin into the fatty tissue. They're slower and have less absorption compared to the IV or IM routes, and a limited volume can be injected, about 2 mLs. So these require a shorter needle, and patients can actually be taught to self-administer sub-Q um, medications. An example would be insulin. Next is intradermal, it's abbreviated ID, which means into the skin. These medications are administered by a direct injection into the top layer of the skin. They have a very short needle and a very small amount injected. And some examples will be anesthetics, TB tests, and allergy tests. And then the other parenteral routes of administration, I'll just briefly tell you what those mean. There's intraarterial, which is abbreviated IA, which means into an artery. Intracardiac, or IC, which is into the heart. Intrathecal is into the space around the spinal cord. Intraocular, which means into an eye. Intraperitoneal, which is into the abdominal cavity. And intraarticular, which is into a joint. And just a little summary and some key points to remember. Um, route of administration is how a drug is placed into the body. There are two main categories. This includes nonparenteral, which are the non-injectable medications, and parenteral, which are injectable medications. And some abbreviations to remember. PO means by mouth. SL is under the tongue, sublingual. OU means into both eyes. OD is the right eye. OS is the left eye. AU is both ears. AD is the right ear. AS is the left ear. TD is transdermal or onto the skin. IV is intravenous or into a vein. IM is intramuscular or into the muscle. SC or SQ is subcutaneous, which means under the skin. ID is intradermal, which means into the skin. IA is intraarterial, which means into an artery. IC is into the heart, intracardiac. PV is vaginal, and PR is rectal. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video with others who may find it helpful, and please subscribe to see more of my drug information videos. Thank you.